Hi friends, welcome back to HTL lectures. This is Hadil Mustafa. Let us continue with CMA Foundation Economics lecture. Okay, friends. Uh, in the previous chapter, we have gone through the money and its functions and uh, all the related topics of money we have discussed. Now, in this new uh, lecture, we are discussing about banking system. Okay, so let us start. There are four topics. to be discussed in this chapter first one is meaning of banking second one is commercial bank and third one is central bank and financial institutions uh, in this chapter in this lecture we will be discussing only meaning of banking and commercial banks okay so let us start first of all meaning of banking see a commercial bank see what is commercial bank uh, commercial bank is a banking system who is doing uh, who is doing the activity of banking for profit okay so they it is a business activity for them so those banks are considered as a commercial banks okay uh, a commercial bank is a financial intermediary you know that financial intermediary means it's media uh, mediator or somebody who is in, uh, acting in between okay they are financial intermediaries what they do the main purpose is to accept the deposit from the surplus unit surplus unit means people or the business entity whoever whoever are the surplus fund with them uh, from them they will accept the deposit and lends this financial resources to the deficit unit that is poor sector or those who need the fund it will be uh, diverted to those deficit unit from the surplus unit that is the meaning of banking or the uh, activity of banking we can say now let us see the functions of commercial bank functions of commercial bank various functions performed by commercial banks are as follows so it's given in paragraph so let us underline uh, one by one acceptance of deposit we have already discussed uh, in the previous paragraph and advancing of loan that is also discussed the basic definition itself says the these two uh, features okay these two functions then next one is credit creation credit creation means giving loan that's it uh, they create uh, credits yes uh, facilitation of payment through checks check facilities transfer of fund nft rtgst such activities then agency functions agency functions and other miscellaneous services okay they will act as an agency service uh, when you have to pay certain uh, bills and all this in monthly uh, basis then the bank will do it for you when you give the instruction so these are agency services and these activities will be done by the bank okay now next one is a definition of banking now we are actually going for the definition of banking there are two definitions given first one is sayers sayers okay what he says it's an institution bank is an institution whose debt what is bank's debt the deposit made by the people that is their debt for a person who is depositing it's an asset but for bank it is a debt because they have to pay it after a certain period are widely accepted the debts are widely accepted in settlement of other people's debt that's it in order to meet other people's debt bank is collecting the um, bank is making the debt by themselves okay that's it it's a good uh, definition now next one is crowther crowther's definition of bank what they what he says collects money from those who have it to spare or who are saving it out of their income and lends this money to those who require it that's it uh, ba uh, banks collecting money for those who have it from those who have it 
uh, or who are saving but they are lending it to the person who requires the same meaning but in different words that's the difference with the definition okay now next one is commercial banks yes now see nowhere in this chapter given the definition of commercial bank so you don't have to worry about this uh, if you want you can you will have a detailed version in your youtube you can see that when you search you can see the difference between commercial bank schedule banks and all these are there but there is no confusion required in case of uh, your syllabus because there is no such classifications clarifications required for your syllabus that's why i'm not going in detail okay now uh, functions of commercial banks let us see we have already discussed the functions now we are highlighting it again or we are giving it in detail first one acceptance of deposit you know that banks main function is acceptance of deposit how they accept deposits see here the way of uh, accepting deposits is given in three ways sorry in four ways okay that is given as a b c d a b C D. Let us discuss each and everything. First one is current deposit. What is current deposit? Current deposit is a. Uh, let us uh, read the highlighted one. Is the most convenient to the businessman, public authorities, and joint stock companies, because there are no restriction on the business and the amount of withdrawals. That's it. For banks, actually, this current deposit will not give you any interest. There is no benefit for you as an interest of uh, as a point of return. There is no benefit for you in case of current deposits. But however, if you are doing a business activity, then it is better to go for current deposit because you will have a good uh, facilities available. Like you can open a, uh, you can. Uh, withdraw as much amount you want you can deposit as much amount you can uh, you can and uh, there is no restrictions uh, formalities are very less and all this gives you the easiness for your business okay that's why people go for current deposits and uh, it is compulsory for business in certain cases to open current account okay that is current deposit next one is savings deposit what is savings deposit the most convenient to small businessman see here also we have used businessman but we haven't used the small businessman so it is usually used for medium and high ranged people they have to open a current account but uh, if you are a small businessman you don't have such funds uh, small savings only you have then you can go for savings account salaried employees artist people belonging to low or medium income group all these persons can use the savings deposit the interest paid on these deposits is comparatively low and is around 4 percentage per annum see that's it the interest rate see in the current deposit there is no interest in the case of savings it gives interest but at the lowest rate it is comparatively very low when you compare to fixed deposits and other deposits so it's uh, almost around four percentage it would be varying according to the banks every bank pays different different rates so you cannot say that it's always four it will be somewhat nearest to the figure now third one is term deposits uh, now they are also called fixed deposit this is a common name that we use in indian parlance so we can say that a uh, term deposit is nothing but the fixed deposit why we call it as a fixed deposit because the money is deposited with the bank for a fixed period of time that's it for fixed period of time the money is not used for uh, you cannot withdraw it uh, uh, when you need if you withdraw that you will lose some money okay so it is always kept for a fixed period during that period you cannot use it after that you can withdraw okay that is the purpose uh, can be withdrawn after the expiry of maturity period okay 
the minimum period of deposit is 15 days see 15 days uh, fd is available uh, one month 45 days uh, six months one year five years ten years fds are available okay so the minimum period of fd is 15 days now the rate of interest varies from six percentage to twelve percentage that's it it pays higher than the savings bank account uh, that is why people go for fixed deposit uh, because if uh, the people are looking for long term investment uh, then it is not good for them to save in savings bank account because that pays only for around 4 percentage but here it varies from 6 to 12 percentage some banks pays only 60 but uh, some banks like private banks uh, are paying high interest rate for the term deposits okay so that's the reason now next one is recurring or cumulative deposits recurring or cumulative deposit means uh, let us read these are the variant of fixed deposit variant it is another version for fixed deposits these deposits are very convenient to those who can't save huge amount at a time that's it see in a fd what we do is that I will deposit if I have 1 lakh rupees I will deposit it now and I will withdraw after uh, put the measure after the maturity but in case of recurring deposits it is also paying similar rate of interest to the fixed deposits it is a uh, not a savings bank account it is also like a fixed deposit but you don't have to pay it at a lump sum amount you can pay in a short uh, installments uh, whatever amount you have you can deposit daily uh, monthly or uh, yearly you can increase your deposits so in that case uh, your deposit interest will be varying according to the deposits that you make this is recurring deposit or cumulative deposit these deposits carry interest at a rate more than that of savings but less than that of term deposit that's it it pays more than savings but less than FD uh, fixed deposits or term deposits okay that is the four uh, deposits available for commercial banks okay so first function first function we have discussed in detail next one is payment of loans and advances first you have accepted the deposit from the public who have the fund through the current account savings account FD uh, recurring deposits all this now you are using this fund for the purpose of lending or you collected you have collected the fund from those who have the fund now you are giving the fund to somebody else who don't have the fund so that is a payment of loans and advances how they make payments uh, how the banks makes payments that is demand loan or call loan see the name itself says that demand loan or call loan means you are giving loan to a certain person with the condition that you should return it as and when i demand or as and when i call you should return it back there is no time limit at all it is based on the person who have gave who gave the fund uh, they have the right to ask at any point of time that's it now should be repaid on demand by the bank it does not have a specified maturity period no maturity period is applicable here this loan is a kind of advance made with or without security this is, there is no requirement of securities uh, re, uh, if you have there is also not an issue okay normally call loans are given to other banks or financial institution for a day or few days see that's it a day or few days it is actually paid for a few days uh, transactions few days period and it is not ma uh, made to business persons or persons or artists or professionals but it is paid to other banks see if i am a an sbi state bank of india bank hdfc is asking the sbi to give some fund for their current requirement of loan so SBI is making payment to HDFC with the condition that you should give us HDFC should give us as and when we ask 
that is uh, generally two days or three days okay that's it that is the first way of making payment next one is short term loans what is short term loans the name itself says that they are sanctioned to businessmen and farmers etc to finance working capital what is our working capital current asset minus current liability that means uh, your short term requirements that is working capital means uh, to meet those working capital requirements individuals uh, ask you certain loan individuals may also receive such loans as personal loans personal loans are also coming under this short term loans and given against security <coughs> see here security is given in case of demand loans and call loans the security is not must here the security is must in case of short term loans now cash credit see this is cash credit uh, cash credit refers to an arrangement by which the bank allows its customers to borrow money up to a specified limit from an account operated for the purpose see uh, cash credit and overdraft you might have heard overdraft account overdraft are same okay but the difference is that in case of cash credit you will get a separate account for cash credit the account itself says that it is cash credit account but in case of overdraft account it is not a separate account it is your savings or current account where you will get a right that even if the balance is zero you can still withdraw up to a limit specified that's it but in the case of cash credit account it is not a deposit account but it is a, a loan account from this loan account you can get the specified amount that is a different okay between the cash credit and uh, overdraft account there is no uh, other difference you can see in the overdraft and cash credit account so you have to understand the difference okay overdraft it is a facility allowed by the bank to the current account holder see that's already given to the current account holder so your existing account your existing account is used uh, and in that existing accounts itself they will be giving you some overdraft right that you can overdraw more than what you have in the account but in the cash credit account it is not like that it is a separate account in which you can withdraw you can use a check or anything in that account but it is not a your current account but it's separate cash credit account okay they are allowed to withdraw money with or without security in excess of balance available in their account up to a limit see up to a limit you can withdraw whatever amount okay next one is discounting of bill of exchange you might have studied already the bill of exchange chapter in that you know that those who the those person who hold the bill of exchange they can draw they can uh, Uh, give it to the bank and they can collect the uh, fund from the bank uh, that you have already said so bank is doing one thing that is discounting of bill of exchange discounting means bank will not give the full amount if you if i am a customer and i have a bill of exchange that is receivable from my customer so i will give this receivable bill of exchange to the bank the amount is 1 lakh rupees that i have to receive but bank will not give me full amount they will be like giving me 95000 and 5000 they will be taking as a bank charge so that's why we call it as a discounting of bill of exchange okay so what they do actually do that the trader who possess such bill of exchange with the uh, with them may approach the bank for discounting of bill of exchange when they need money so the bank is doing discounting of bill of exchange that is also an another important activity now next one is credit card 
you know that some people uh, professionals uses credit cards credit card is also like cash credit uh, you will have a credit card account from that credit card it is a loan account actually it's a personal loan account you will have a limit that uh, suppose 50000 rupees so every month you can withdraw this 50000 rupees but after 50 or whatever the time period uh, within that period you have to pay it the complete amount you have to pay off then uh, next time you can use the it again okay so uh, up to the limit you can use whatever way you want but you have to repay it within the time period that is given then after repayment you can use it again with the same limit or they will be increasing your limit if you are a regular taxpayer okay uh, regular uh, uh, you are not making any default in the credit card payment that's why okay now let us see a credit card uh, holder can use his cards to purchase goods on credit from specified firm and shops and also withdraw cash subject to certain regulations that's it now see this we have completed payment of loans and advances so two functions of commercial banks we have discussed acceptance of deposits uh, uh, payment of loans and advances third one is creation of credit credit creation see in the money chapter money we have discussed that there are two ways of creating money. One is the issue or printing of currency by the RBI. In that way, you can supply the money into the market. And the other way of supplying the money into the market is that whatever money is circulated and bought to the bank as a deposit, the bank further can issue it to the market. This is also a pumping system. This is also increasing the people's uh, money supply so that is a uh, one of the activity done by the bank so creation of credit is a one of the important point in uh, the activity of commercial banks so what they do is that credit is created from out of the primary deposits of the of money in customers received from the public Part of the total amount of this deposit is given as loan and advance to the customers. That's it. See, if I have received 100 crore as a deposit, some portion I will keep it in the bank, like uh, 20 percentage, that is 20 crore, keep in the bank. and remaining 80 crore i can give to the public okay for the uh, as a loan okay so this 80000 you have actually creating a credit to the public this is a way of creating credit this is what we have discussed in this paragraph let us read once again the credit is created from out of the primary deposits primary deposits of money the customer receives from the public part of the total amount not the full amount part that is 80 80 crores is given as a loans and advances to the customers okay that's it now agency function we have already discussed there are many agency functions made by the commercial banks so let us see what are they collection of checks see when you give checks to the bank they will be collecting it from the uh, parties bank uh, bank and this is an activity this is an agency service they do the draft bill of exchange etc then collection of dividend for you and interest from the business or industrial firms okay and then purchase and sale of securities on your behalf see that's also acts as a trustee and keep their funds in safe custody 
acting as an executor or executing the will of the customer after his death okay after the death also they will be keeping your money safely whoever is a legal hire or the uh, genuine uh, uh, nominee then they can collect the fund from the bank until then it will be uh, uh, kept as a trusteeship fund okay making payment such as insurance premium income tax subscription etc all this these are the agency functions you don't have to buy hard these points just uh, uh, remember this uh, one or two point uh, this every word remember the point this uh, key points then you just write okay and general utility function what are the general utility functions that is also banks uh, function then uh, locker facility that is a and demand draft dd and mail transfer online transfer see i have highlighted already the important points you just have to underline that's only issue letter of credit letter of credit to be enable customers to purchase commodities on the base of credit see letter of credit is something that uh, when uh, you want to buy a particular product from a person but you don't have the fund the bank is not giving you loan and you are not asking the loan but bank is saying you uh, the you are asking the bank please give me a letter of credit that will ensure that you i have certain assets with me and this asset is sufficient uh, to pay off this party's account so bank will give a letter of credit to the purchaser to the customer uh, then uh that is also a general utility function okay it's a uh, general utility function given by the bank and this is how the nero bodhi used it okay you can just google it and how that happen you can check then there is a letter of credit lc issues and all this uh, you can know okay now guarantee to the shares issued uh for the shares issued by the uh, stock uh, joint stock companies uh, they will uh, to show that the shares are no, uh, not weak it is a genuine shares it's a new company in progress they are having such assets and the backup in their bank account so to show that they will be standing as a guarantor to share issued then traveler check traveler check is very important when you are a foreign traveler nowadays we use debit cards and credit card before the this invention of uh, plastic uh, plastic money uh, this traveler check was used importantly when they move from one country to another country for a travel purpose and they cannot get, keep the all money with them by hand so they will be asking the bank to give a traveler check which can, which they can withdraw from any banks outside the country so that is a traveler check then provide foreign exchange uh, when you go to bank and you give indian rupee and you ask to give dollar uh, or any other currency pounds sterlings this uh, then the banks will give you this is also a general utility function convey information on behalf of their customers yes the banks will uh, convey if uh, the if you want the bank to say that this uh, please inform this party this uh, only those those information which is related to your bank that can be uh, uh, said to the bank and it will be informed by the bank to the persons who is concerned now next one is atm that we all use automated teller machine so these are the general utility functions so we have completed the functions five functions we have discussed uh, let us uh, see once again what is the first point acceptance of deposit then next one is payment of loans and advances then a third point credit creation creation of credit 
agency function general utility function now we are going for principles of commercial banks what is principles of commercial banks what are the principles applicable for commercial banks first one is principle of liquidity what is that every day depositors either deposits or withdraw cash to meet the demand for cash all commercial banks have to keep certain amount of cash in their custom custody that is principle of liquidity you cannot say that bank cannot say that we don't have fund bank should keep certain amount liquid fund for their day to day operations and their emergency needs okay that is a principle important principle principle of liquidity then principle of profitability see principle of profitability means to generate profit see everyone is doing business for the profit bank is also doing it for the profit so they are profit motive so this principle is there that is why they are charging high rate for the loan and they are giving you low rate for the deposits that difference is their profit okay so that is also their principle next one is principle of solvency the bank should not be closed because the bank uh, if the bank closes the bank owners or uh, the managers have no issue they will just find other jobs and they can open new banks the person who are affecting is that person who have deposited so it is affecting other party so it is a very important issue uh, to be uh, checked by the banks they should be solvent and rbi is consistently doing many activities to ensure that bank is solvent now you can see the issue of city banks and all this see this all you can understand that principles of solvency is to be followed and uh, if it's not followed then the bank have not followed the principle of banking yes now commercial banks commercial banks should have fin uh, financially sound and maintain a required capital for running the business they should have financial soundness uh, and they should uh, require capital for running the business then principle of safety very important because the bank is maintaining fund of other persons so the safety is to be assured at any cost and uh, may, uh, there are locker facilities there are valuables like gold investments uh, papers and uh, documents your uh, property documents the money that you have deposited into bank everything is there so the principle of safety is also ensured by the bank bank are to be cautious because bank's money is depositors money principle of collection of savings see that is also that we have already discussed the main function uh, includes the collection accepting deposits that is collection of savings the savings are coming to the bank so the way of collecting savings account is to be checked by the bank they have to do some the activity so this is also their principle they, they have to work on this thing very clearly okay collection of savings then i i think just the heading is required then you can write in your own words because these paragraphs are not uh, up to the level that we can write so you can give your own uh, sentence uh, the, i have already given the explanation it is a uh, the savings uh, how you are going to collect the savings the collect the deposits so there should be a principle you should follow that principles okay now next one is principle of loans and investment policy you have to check to whom you are going giving the loan there should be proper principle and how you are going to invest this fund see the giving of loan is an investment and you are investing in a business and a share market that is also a uh, policy okay so these policies uh, you have to you should have some principles on this loans and investment policy also now principle of economy principle of economy means never go for any unnecessary expenditure the bank is using the fund of others so you should not go no should not go for unnecessary expenditure okay this is uh, being a big cause for the economy 
not just the bank now principle of providing service we have already uh, known about this agency services and a uh, general utility services so this this is also their job principle of secrecy principle of secrecy means you should not give your uh, clients details to anyone unless there is a legal requirement okay maintain and keep their clients account secretly nobody except the legitimated person is allowed to see accounts to the clients see if somebody came and asked that please give me this party's bank account bank statement bank should not give because it is a secret of the person so when there is a legal requirement legitimate reason then you can give otherwise you cannot the bank cannot disclose they should maintain the secrecy okay that is an important uh, feature principle now principle of modernization see banks should be modernized they should not be doing the traditional activity they should install the uh, atms online facilities um, customer service all this shall be given according to the modern facility to cope up with the advanced world that's it just underline that words now principle of specialization see specialization is very important in the banking sector is also there is specialization now you can see that small finance bank and agricultural bank industrial development bank see everyone is uh, focusing on certain area so specialization is there in the banking sector also so you have to understand which area you are focusing and you should give the best to that point okay so that's it principle of specialization here commercial bank segment their whole function into various parts and place their human resources according to their efficiency principle of location the location of bank is very important uh, choose a suitable site where the availability of customer is large that's it location should be very good principle of relation see the bank should be a relative to the person who are who are coming to the bank so that is also a very important relation always try to maintain a good relation with their customer and potential customer see this is the principle we don't know whether it's followed or not but it's the principle of the banking system now principle of publicity see bank should give publicity then only people will start investing if you would like to earn more money you will have to give more advertisement through various media you can see that banks are also now giving the advertisement in tvs online facilities all this so why because they want investments now now we have essentials of a sound banking system see for a sound banking system for a uh, for being a good banking system what are the things required first one is adequate liquidity we have already discussed for a sound banking system they should have liquid funds with them uh, whoever comes when there is a genuine requirement that should be paid off so adequate liquidity is important a bank must keep sufficient cash in hand to meet the claim of depositors otherwise they would be insolvent otherwise the bank will be treated as insolvent because they are not able to pay the fund they have diverted the fund and which may be very which may give very loss to the bank and the economy if it's huge now expansion of banking next uh, important essential things for sound banking system expansion of banking banking facility should spread throughout the economy also cover all sections of people less developed region should give more priority than others okay so that is it essentials of bank first one is adequate liquidity then expansion of banking then third one is investments and loan policy we have already discussed investment and loan policy in the principles okay a sound banking system must have a sound investment policy or it can optimize the twin goal of liquidity and profitability okay 
No. Human factor. Human factor means soundness of a bank depends upon the quality of bankers. The employees, the owner, the management, everyone is a important factor for banking. The banking being a practical affair rigid application of bank laws are not always fruitful so you should not always uh, work on the rigid rules of the banking system you should be focusing on the people okay now credit creation of commercial bank now uh, let us see what is credit creation we have already discussed credit creation is a way of giving loan okay and that we have already discussed in the previous sections now let us see what is explained here a commercial bank is called a dealer or dealer not or it is of dealer of OF dealer of credit okay it can create credit that is it can expand the money monetary base of a country mm, how it does it does so not by issuing new money see they do not issue new money it is issued by RBA but by its loan operation we have already said that they will be pumping the money again to the economy so it is like issuing new currency but it's not the way uh, that pumping we call it as credit creation okay the bank create money on the base of cash deposits the bank create money on the base of cash deposits that's it whatever amount deposited in the previous example 100 crore is a cash deposit Based on this 100 crore only, you will decide whether how much you have to deposit 80 crores or something. So, banks create money on the basis of cash deposits. Now, let us see these highlighted points. Suppose the bank receives sum of 1000 as deposit keeps with it 20 percentage 20 percentage is kept and see you don't have to read this now and lends the rest 20 percentage is kept and lends the rest uh, so uh, how much they have lended the positive will ha uh, will claim he has thousand and the bank borrows two persons eight hundred so he can loan now eight hundred rupees can be given as loan the total money supply appears to be one lakh sorry one thousand eight hundred so actually the money available in the economy is a thousand only but through this thousand rupees we have already circulated the other eight hundred through credit creation so 800 is through credit creation and 1000 is through uh, printing of money okay so that's the way now uh, i don't think any other points are required it is repeating you can see that so uh, you don't have to read it again now limitations of credit creation what is the limitation what are the limitations uh, when your credit creation get reduced first one size of cash reserve ratio now we have to discuss about the cash reserve ratio so let me go to another page okay see Mr. H has deposited rupees thousand 
to bank. Okay. And from this thousand rupees, uh, it can give to Mr. L rupees eight hundred as a loan. The remaining twenty percentage, the remaining two hundred rupees two hundred is kept remaining 200 is kept by the bank in RBI kept by the bank in the RBI this fund that is kept in the RBI is known as CRR so whatever fund that you have kept from the portion of the deposit from the portion of the deposit then that amount is known as CRR now let's read again okay now CRR size of cash reserve ratio Uh, when the cash reserve ratio is high see before it was 200 right so if the cash reserve ratio is re increased to 300 means you can now dispose only 700 so it will affect your credit creation understood so that is also a one thing so it is size of cash reserve ratio is affecting the credit creation credit creation is inversely related to CRR that is when CRR is increasing credit creation is decreasing in CRR ratio cash reserve ratio is increasing means you have to keep more money in the RBI then you cannot create more credit CRR what is CRR is a minimum fraction of total deposit of a customer which commercial banks are required to hold as reserve either in cash or deposit with the central bank in India central bank is RBI so with the RBI how much amount they have to keep as a cash or deposit that is the CRR this is the first point the next limitation is amount of loan given see uh, you have in the previous example you have 800 rupees available for loan but you cannot give that sometimes uh, there are uh, sufficient uh, manager is not giving or the bank is not ready to give they are giving only 700 means the credit creation has been reduced or there is no sufficient securities so we can give only a loan up to 700 or 600 then the credit creation is reduced so amount of loan given is also another important thing for limitation of credit creation next one is size of cash deposit see in the example we have said that we have thousand rupees as a deposit but if you we don't have thousand rupees we have only 900 means then from this 900 we have to keep certain portion in CRR then remaining only we can give for loan so when there is a reduction when there is only less amount received as a cash deposit then you can give only very less credit the smaller the cash base the smaller scope of the bank gets to gets for credit creation that's it if the cash base is very less then the loan the credit creation is also less acceptable securities see if there is no uh, securities that we have already discussed in this point the same thing we are discussing here also amount of loan given that is only here also explaining a borrower gets a loan from the bank only against some securities so if there is no sufficient securities bank cannot give the loan so in that case also credit creation is reduced now controlled by central bank controlled by central bank that is also a limitations of credit creation the central bank can control what the CRR ratio 
or uh, central bank can say that you cannot you can issue only this much amount central bank will implement the policies and all this so if the central bank thinks that this much amount can be given then there is also a uh, limitations of credit creation central bank possesses certain instruments by the use of this it can increase or decrease the volume of credit creation okay so that's it so these are the points so next point is not related to uh, the limitations of credit creation limitations of credit creation is over here your alignment and this uh, headings are not proper that's why you will get confused one two the point is one two here over then three it's four it's five five limitations now next one is is explanation for a fifth point it is not sixth point it is an explanation credit controlled by central bank we have already said that controlled by central bank central bank can control the credit creation now how we are going to control that is explaining in this point so this is a new heading a central bank possesses a number of instruments for controlling credit money there are two ways quantitative and qualitative quantitative techniques means total quantity of credit qualitative measures affects the availability of credit here we are uh, quantitatively stating uh, or uh, giving the credit creation in qualitative measures we are not giving any amount wise restriction but we are saying that you should give only to this sector of people then if you don't have such sector uh, more in that area where you have banking sec ba banks located then you cannot give such credit so in that way bank can regulate the rbi can regulate so first control the quantitative control first quantitative control is bank rate policy bank rate policy what is bank rate and how it's a uh, control on credit let's see the rate of interest charge by the central bank is known as bank rate or discount rate it is a bank it is a rate charged by central bank from the commercial bank by manipulating bank rate central bank can regulate the credit creation power of member banks see if the bank rate is increased that is uh, if central bank is charging more interest rate from the commercial banks means commercial bank will not be ready to take any loan from the central bank will not ask any fund from the central bank so in that case commercial bank will not have fund with them so they will reduce the credit at that point so this is a if the bank rate is raised by the central bank commercial banks are to borrow at higher rate sure then they will increase their lending rate see when there is high cost for them then the loan rate loan interest will also be increased this rate is known as market rate this rate is known as market rate this lending rate is known as market rate the difference between the market rate and bank rate is the ma profit margin of the commercial bank okay when bank rate rises market rates also rises it is directly related when the bank rate the uh, central bank's rate is increasing then the loan rate is also increasing there is a direct relationship demand for bank loan will reduce so when there is an increase in bank rate loan demand will uh, decrease because uh now the interest rate is very high so people will uh, reduce the loan only genuine people will ask for the loan okay now for credit expansion bank rate is reduced 
for credit expansion bank rate is reduced if you want to give more credit then uh, central bank will reduce the bank rate the effectiveness of this techniques depends on the extent to which commercial banks depend on the central bank for loans and rediscounting see if the central if this uh, commercial bank is not asking any fund from the central bank they themselves have the sufficient fund then this will not affect when the central commercial bank ask the central bank for their fund shortage in that case only they will be having this issue otherwise there is no bank rate issue if banks can collect funds from other sources at relatively cheaper rate if the bank is uh, able to get others uh, other funds other than the central bank at a lower rate they need not depend on the central bank or credit in that case also bank rate will not be affecting them okay now that is a first uh, one of the control quantitative control quantity wise they will be controlling next to quantity control is a open market operation this is second quantity control what is open market operation open market operation means purchase and sale of securities in the stock market see uh, who will purchase and sell the central bank if uh, let us read then we will explain when the central bank appears in the market as a seller of government securities people buy such securities by withdrawing money from the bank that's it when the central bank uh, issue securities sell securities in the market what they do is that they will be giving more interest rate than bank then people will withdraw their deposit from the bank and they will invest in the central bank uh, securities in that case what happens is that or the bank themselves either the depositors themselves deposits or the bank themselves invest in such securities instead of granting loan to the public either way whatever may be the case it, it will reduce the credit creation in either cases the power of credit creation will be restricted if the people reduce their deposits from the bank then their credit creation will also get reduced if the bank themselves deposits in the government securities without giving loan also in that case also there will be reduction in credit creation on the other hand the central banks buy sec uh, securities in these points we have discussed about the purchase first two first two two and three bullet points is about purchase this is about sales when if the central bank by security here they are by security money flows oh okay no sorry here they are selling here they are selling here they are purchasing by securities money flow out of out this enlarges the cash base of member banks so if there are if the central bank thinks that there are money requirement in that case what happens is that central bank will enter into the market and they will buy securities and will give fund to the market in that case the market will have some fund and credit creation is created and credit creation is maintained and uh, now this point we have already discussed this is nothing but a crr we have already discussed we don't have we don't have to repeat it that's why i have striked it out now qualitative credit control see we have already discussed quantitative credit controls what are the quantitative credit controls bank rate policy open market operation one more thing that is crr okay you have to consider it as a third point but you don't have to uh 
mark the points okay next one is qualitative credit controls what are the qualitative credit controls that is either purpose wise or area wise what is purpose wise the purpose of selective controls in the rational allocation of secure bias of secure uh, scores bank credit and its economic utilization that is uh, for a particular purpose you are giving loan okay that's it uh, in that case uh, it's uh, ba ba the people are saying uh, the central bank is saying that you have to give loan for this purpose only then the other purpose will be uh, having no credit facility so in that case the purpose wise uh, qualitative measures can be implemented further sectorial development of credit and controlling in other direction secure purpose of preventing speculative activity with the help of business finance and favoring productive activities see the central bank is saying that you should not give loan to a particular area a particular speculative business activity uh, that is also that is also a qualitative credit control now next qualitative measure is moral suasion is a qualitative technique now the central bank request bank to lend more or not to lend in some sectors that's it moral suasion there is no legal compulsion behind their acceptance is just it's a, just a request there is no legal compulsion for them this is moral suasion generally if a request is not carried out by the member it is not number bank it is member bank the guardian of the banking system may takes such steps as banks are forced to accept so banks can take their own actions the central bank is often empowered to issue directives to member banks central bank can give any directions any ideas any suggestions to the uh, commercial bank such direct order are in the form of directional control prohibiting loan of particular types of particular type of giving advance advice to grant loans to priority sectors that is moral suasion priority sector should be given more uh, importance the so these are the things you have to focus on the qualitative control there are two ways uh, there are two ways to control the credit by the central bank either through quantitative or qualitative so in qualitative we have moral suasion purpose wise and area wise quality controls okay hope you understood these points thank you thanks for watching please keep supporting my channel and after completing your videos please uh, attend the exams that uh, the link i have given in uh, this video this video description and uh, you can ask me any doubt in my whatsapp group uh, there i will be discussing all your clarifying all your doubts that you have up to the chapters that we have taken we have almost completed our economics topic so whatever points you have you can ask me through my whatsapp number so friends thank you thanks for watching please keep watching this video and share to your friends who are not attending any class uh, in the institutions and all do who are not able to attend the classes so i think it will be very useful for them also so keep keep supporting and thank you thanks for watching once again